Uh, back in those days, the magazine editors used to walk up and down the beach. But they were getting the same, exactly the same photos from 20 different guys. Yeah. With my shot, they took yeah. them all, mm. because, simply because they were different. Sean Davey, welcome to the podcast, mate. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. Uh, how's things going over there? Not too shabby. Yeah, that's so what I guess. That's what I tell everybody when they ask me how things are going. <laughs> First of all, I saw in your um, stories yesterday, congrats apparently are in order for your, uh, for your US passport. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's been coming for a long time, really. I've yeah. been living on green cards all this time. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, coming, I was coming for a third time around on the green card. I was like, oh, I'll just get the scissors and be done with it. Yep. Yeah. So I did. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, awesome. Amazing. Well, just on that point, I guess for people who maybe have seen your imagery but um, don't necessarily know your story, can we sort of, I guess, kick off by jumping back to the beginning and can you kind of let us know where you're from um, and I guess like how you got a camera in your hand just in the first place and we can start yeah. from there. Yeah. Uh, pretty long story. Yeah. <laughs> well, I started off in Tasmania. That's where mm. I'm from. And... Uh, it's interesting, actually, because my first experience with surf was kind of terrifying and wondrous all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I'm like three years old. I'm a triplet. And I'm like, uh, we're like three years old. And our mum took us down the beach and told us to sit on the sand. So we're sitting there on the beach and she goes into the ocean. And then this big mouth opens up and eats her up. That, that was a wave breaking clear over the, yeah. top of the, the little yeah. three-year-old was like, what the hell just happened to mum, you know? Yeah, wow. So, so it, never, it never put me off the ocean. Just mm. actually, if anything, it just increased my, increased my wonderment for it. Yep. You know, I, I got when I was a kid, first sign of being in the ocean was the smelly seaweed. Yep, yep. The smelly seaweed, you know, the rotting, the rotting kelp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, even though it smells gross, so it was a good sign. Meant yeah. we were going to the beach. You know. Awesome. So, yeah, anyway, great memory. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I I moved to Sydney when I was like 10 or 11. And mm -hmm. I, just, I was living at Bronte, and uh, this one day I came home and raced down the beach, and the waves were perfect, but they were tiny. They were like mm -hmm. four or five, six inches, you know. And yep. I'm sitting there thinking, wishing I could shrink down to a cockroach so I could surf her, right? And <laughs> then I remember the, the crappy old Kodak Instamatic 126 camera that was in the back of the wardrobe. Yeah. So I went up and got that, and I just got down to the beach and knelt down and just squeezed off one frame, and it came out really good. All my friends are going, how come there's no one out there? <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. I look at the picture now. It's a piece of crap, but, you yeah. know, like, at the yeah. time... Yep. It was intriguing, you know. Mm. It was, that's what that's what got us started. Did you? That's and interesting that you um even had the think to like lower your level and like shoot the shot. Did you have any like? Is there any photography yeah, background or art that, in your? That, that, well, that was the thing. I had that mm. from the get go. Was the mm. the composition? Yeah, that's what I did. I knelt down and composed it. Mm. So I had that right right from the get go, right from the very first shot. So that was just natural. Uh, Is there any kind of art art in your family or anything like your your parents or anything? Or no, not really. No. Mm. Oh, yeah, no, my mum, my mum was really into art though. She was always had lots yep. of art hanging around the house and stuff, and mm. in the music, you know, a lot of a lot of music and yeah, no, yep. so it yeah. was it was kind of arty farty house in that way. Yeah, that is fascinating. But that was your uh, that was your first instinct. Yeah, mm. Mm. yeah. So now I can remember sending pictures to Surfing World, mm -hmm. Bruce Channon and Aton, and they would send them back saying, "Look, you've really got to, you've really got to use slide film." So I was sending in prints, not knowing any better. Yeah, you, you've really got to use slide film, and the, I think the quote was, "You pay, you get, you get what you pay for." <laughs> and so I started using slide film after that. Um, I worked heavily in uh, color labs, especially professional color labs. Mm -hmm. I've pretty much done everything you can do in the dark room, except the only thing I never got to do was process Kodachrome. Amazing. Kodachrome, you had to be like a registered chemist and 
It yep. was like 50, 50 different chemical baths. I mean, it was quite complex. Mm -hmm. So I never did that, but I, I did do everything else, and it, it taught me a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I, was, I was able to... Um, I just had skills beyond the normal skill set for just all the different equipment and yeah. stuff that I use, you know? Definitely, definitely. Um, so what sent me out on my own eventually was I was actually living in the northern beaches and I was uh, working in this lab in Chatswood. And it was I was wasting an hour and a half each way every day, sitting mainly sitting in traffic. I thought, fuck this, man. I, I don't want to waste 15 hours a week mm -hmm. doing this. Yep. So that's when I went out on my own, just bit the bullet and went full-time shooting surf photography. And Yeah. Uh, I think I was mainly shooting for surfing off at that stage. So how did that, um, like, how does that part, like from that first, that first photo to then taking the, like getting into surf photography to then to be submitting, like there must've been some quality to them to be submitting them to magazines. Like how did that kind of come about? That first photo kind of got yeah, you a bit fascinated. Yeah, really quality. I look back on the stuff that I was saying, it was pretty bad. Yeah. You know, I was, no. Nah. Oh. <laughs> I was a total rank amateur, really. <laughs> but was it something he, that like. He, he had skills that he wasn't really aware of yet. Yeah, know, yep. Yeah. But, uh, but was no, it something like after that first surfing. photo, you kind of got a bit fascinated and just started shooting a lot of surfing, like when you were younger? Is that sort of how it came about? Did you have friends who were surfers? Like how did you sort of, the content sort of come about initially? Um, I was just randomly shooting. I wasn't really shooting anyone in particular, mm. unless I went to one of the contests, some of the big contests like the Coke Surf Mountain. Yep. Maybe get to shoot Mark Richards and those guys. Yeah, yeah. Which was always pretty, it was always pretty cool back in those days. Yeah. Tommy Carroll and all, all those guys. Yeah, that was yep. definitely something about that era of pro surfers. Mm. It was much more interesting than the ones that we have today. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we have good surfers. They have great surfers today, but yep. it was just so much more iconic back then, weren't they? Yeah, it was a good time, definitely. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. It's, it's a little bit like the evil can evil factor, I guess. I mean, look at him out with his... Mark Richards surfboards and yep, you know, there, there was a bit of bit of that showmanship. Showmanship was there definitely. And back in those days, it was actually what was most important really was um, style. Mm. Yeah, style was what defined surfers back in those days. One hundred percent. Yep, it's still totally relevant. Yeah, yeah. Like every now and then, I'll see, um, I'll see uh, what's his name, um, this is World Champ right now. Brazilian. Uh Filippo. Filippo. Yeah. Yeah, I'll yeah. see him bust out something so stylish. I'm like, oh god, that's that's great, you know. Like, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you don't yeah. see it too often these days, but it's yeah. nice when they do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a couple of them out there. Yeah, Ethan Ewing's still got a bit of that uh that style oh, as well. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately got injured. Amazing. Um he's just Did been he? injured, so he's out of um he's out of the comp now, apparently. Just broke his oh, back. Out of, the, out of the year run. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's looking like it. So, so when you um, you just mentioned before you were like, you know, I made the leap to go and do photography full time professional. So how does how does that actually come about? Because that's something I guess that is like it's interesting to say. And obviously, there'd be a lot of photographers that'd be fascinated about that. Going, oh, I'd love to be a full time photographer. So what what did that involve? Did you get a? I really got a my foothold in the door. I really got my foothold in the door with magazines mm -hmm. when I was living in Ta back in Tasmania. So I was shooting all these really cool lineups that nobody had seen. Mm -hmm. So the magazines loved them, you know. They're like, oh, where's this? This is cool, you know. Yep. And so I had a lot of really great lineups from Tasmania. So a lot of that stuff used to get published. There was a mag that used to be out called Surfing Snaps. Remember uh -huh. that one? Mm -hmm. He used to use a lot of my Tassie lineups. Uh -huh. Kirk Wilcock was the, was the yeah. editor. Yep. But that's what really gave me a foot in the door with the magazines was all the stuff I was getting published with that mag because mm -hmm. that was the same guy who was who was um, editing tracks at the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'd wander in and out of their offices every now and then. So just making an appearance but make, it helps a lot. Um, it's hard. It's way harder now, though, I mean, as far as being a published photographer because there's just not that many magazines around it. Definitely. The ones that are, mm. the ones that are about, they're not publishing very often. 
Yep. And they're not paying very well. So mm. there's not really a living to be made from being a magazine photographer unless you're just the shit. Mm. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> and everybody's 100%. got to have you for some reason. Yeah. Or other, but, so how yeah. did that how did those early days kick off for you then? So you got noticed for some some tazzy photos and you built some relationships and then what happened from there was that when you started going to Hawaii or I actually got asked I got asked to go to Hawaii. I wasn't really interested in going to Hawaii because everybody went simply mm-hmm. because everybody goes. Yeah. I was I was always been one who likes to go places where the others aren't going. Yeah. It's like I used to go to Tassie a lot. This is before, way before people really knew about Tasmania. Yep. Yep. Um, so anyway, I got I got asked to go to Hawaii. So I'm a, a Japanese agent and I paid my fare and costs and stuff because they wanted me to go shoot it. Mm-hmm. So that that's how I ended up in Hawaii. Um, but then I found I really liked it. It's kind yep. of like uh, a little bit like Australia in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, so, and so you were, so you arrive in Hawaii. You haven't been there, but you're going there. I guess this is the start of your surf photography career. You're looking to work for magazines. So how does that process oh, no, work? If you got a... it was already well underway by then. But uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yep. um, I remember the first time I shot in Hawaii. Um, I got a lift. Mm-hmm. I was staying in this place called Jocko's, which is yeah, you know, a few miles away from Pipe. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I got a lift and it seemed like everybody was shooting at this one spot because all the cars were parked there. So I just got them to drop me off there and I went and shot thinking I just shot pipe and it turned out I was shooting logs. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then so I walked down I walked down the beach towards Pipe Mall and I saw guys surfing uh rock pile. It was pretty good. I'm thinking, okay, that's pipe. <laughs> you know, uh, pipe was still much further down the beach, you know. Yep. But that's kind of how it is on the North Shore. All the waves are breaking. Pretty close to the beach, you know. It's like it's yeah, it's like total arena style. Hundred percent, yeah. And so, what was that yeah. like then? If there's guys already over there, and you're over there, I guess for your first time or your early days, what was that situation like with other photographers, surfers? Was it like a competitive environment? Did you have to sort of earn your earn your respect or anything like that? Like, how did that as early days work? Uh, I don't know, really. Uh... I, don't know, I just kind of got to know everybody. Yep. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't really any kind of weirdness like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, it did get. It did start to get kind of weird in the water though. Mm-hmm. There was some ego. There was some egos going on in the water, and and yep. then once digital photography took off, uh, it killed water photography there for a few years because it was like twenty or thirty guys out there all shooting fisheye photos of each other's heads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was totally messed up. I remember one day I was out there and Hank was just all snapping on them all. <laughs> so, anyway. But, yeah. These days you can go out there. There's days where there's not even anyone out shooting now. It's kind of gone back to the old days. Okay. But, yeah. As far as shooting goes. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, if it's the middle of the season and it's pumping, there's bound to be a lot of guys shooting. So, yeah, yeah. It's it's more the off season days that get good that there's no one around. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you obviously you're you've you've stayed there long like long term. At this just a minute mm-hmm. ago, you mentioned that you weren't necessarily a hundred percent on going over there like before you'd been there. Mm-hmm. So was there any sort of um, sessions moments like when you were you know you first started shooting there? Was there something that kind of said, "Yep, this is like." this is something pretty epic. I want to stay here. I want to continue to capture this. Was there anything that, like any shots or sessions that you remember that kind of were part of that? Well, just being a surf photographer in general, I mean, mm-hmm. the conditions that you get here in Hawaii, even just on an on an everyday day basis, mm. can be like absolutely epic for other places. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good place to shoot. Yeah. Um, surfing. Yep. Um, right. yeah. So, what was your actual? Um, so, you were shooting for magazine. Were you ever like a like? What was your career? Were you a staff photographer for, for a particular magazine? Did you shoot and sell images to a variety of magazines? Like, how did that work for you in your kind of? I guess the well, main heyday. You tend, back in those days, you tended to work with one mag or the other. You know, like in, mm-hmm. in certainly with each country. Yeah. So as I tended to, I did that. I worked. Mm-hmm. Uh, I worked with one camp, one magazine at a time. 
but I'd also work with another magazine in another country. So okay. like, mm -hmm. I would be able to set up trips somewhere knowing that tracks and maybe surfing magazines were both going to throw in to cover my costs. Yep. Yeah. So that's where, how I was able to make it work as a traveling photographer. Mm. And plus, yep. you know, the other thing was it, it was good to have them invested in your trips because mm. if you only got mediocre conditions, they still try really hard to use it because they paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas if, you, if you go off on a trip and you get skunked, that's too bad. Yeah. No, we don't need yep. that shit. You know? <laughs> 100%. But, you know, so, but yeah, I think that's fascinating. Days, it would be way, it would be so much harder these days because everybody's got a camera. Yep. Hardly, hardly any epic moment ever goes on photographs. Exactly. Yeah. So there's way more. There's there's just a, a shitload more epicness out there now than there ever mm. used to be. For sure. And For so sure. It would be hard to be a, pub, a a consistently published photographer, especially if you're shooting surf. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Seems to me the only guys that are making money off surfing are the are the ones that are shooting the catalogs for the companies and stuff. They're still yep. getting some kind of day rate, but anything else? Yep. Eh, I yeah. Think, yeah. I think it's almost like the companies looked at us as a, as a bunch of layabouts. Mm. Like, you know, oh, look, those guys are on a good wicket. They get to travel around the world and kick back in nice places and shit. What are we paying them for? You know? <laughs> and that's kind of how it went, it went when yeah. digital came along because – when digital came along, all the rich parents suddenly had digital cameras and they were photographing their kids and sending yep. the photos of their kids to the companies trying to get sponsored. And so the mm. companies are like, why are we paying these guys? Yeah. You know, these, are, these are parents sending us this shit. Yep. So that and the fact that Quick and Billabong bus went public, mm. that, brought, that brought the bean counters in, and that really changed a lot. That changed a lot of stuff. Yeah. It was it was kind of the Wild West before that. Definitely, I yeah. Know, I don't know if Wild West is the right name, but... Yeah, no, it makes sense, yeah. When they went public, there was just so much more balances and checks and stuff. You yeah, know. yeah. Yeah, it was, it was different. So I think no, before that, it was more mate. It was more mate who you knew, almost, mm -hmm. in the definitely. industry. Definitely. Well, I mean, like, you still had to be good, mm. right? But if you knew people in the right places, that could help a lot. Whereas, you know, maybe... That's all that matters, Dan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. No, it's it's, right. it's fascinating just to yeah to talk to someone who was kind of yeah doing it at that time. So you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. So as the photographer, was it your, I guess, like job, or you could create your own work by putting a trip idea together and then kind of getting Pretty that much spot, that's what, it? Yeah, that's what I did on the off season. I would mm. you know, put together one or two trips each year, get a bunch of surfers together yep who sponsors, who sponsors want to get them on trips and then i'd take the idea of the mag and they'd usually run it they yeah usually go with it yep um went to the cook islands that was pretty cool mm -hmm. um what other places did we go to this the high pie islands they're north of tonga pretty yep. interesting area actually mm -hmm. i heard i heard the uh quicks that were crossing went there and they were pretty impressed okay with the setup they saw yeah, me too. I saw a lot of interesting setups. I thought, oh, that'd be so good if there was a good swell running. Yeah. Stuff like that, you know. So what was uh, the um like when you were thinking about those trips, was the idea to find maybe some places like that that were a little bit more like um unknown to run or like what what sort of brought together the the trips and the ideas of where to go? Well, it wasn't really wanting to name anything. I, I always mm. had a always had to pretty strict I'm not gonna name it kind of yep. but you know there'd be there'd be a couple of local images you know people could put together and work it out you know but mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't just outright name it no yeah yeah that's that's the, that's the instagram generation that does that yeah yeah <laughs> for sure um, it was like king island like i went to i went to king island like 17 times for the magazines yeah wow. never named it yeah but in the end we did name it because it's un, it's so under threat now that they that they want to put this huge salmon farm in there, mm -hmm. and they will absolutely ruin it if they do that. Yeah, yeah. Like I heard, they want to start with a million fish, and a million fish Jesus. Wow. is is about the same as I think ten thousand people shitting in the water every day. That's insane. Like un, untreated, untreated. So imagine it's... all that shit just floating up across the across yep. the sandbar for Martha's. I mean, it just ruin yep. it. 
It's insane. Not only the, the pollution, but <clears> I <throat> think that they'll mess with the it'll mess with the sand as well because the mm, sand definitely up from the east is what creates the sandbars at Martha's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean Martha's is a pretty amazing beach. It's my favorite beach in the world. It's, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's it's such an unusual beach. It's like it faces northeast, but its swell comes from the southwest. Yep. So think about that. Mm. The swell comes around both sides of the yeah. island, and yeah, and then meets up in A-frame on in. the beach. It's really, yeah. really neat. Yeah, I've never seen. There's only one place that I've seen that looks anything like it, and this is one that uh, they used to go to somewhere in the Caribbean. Um, yeah, I, I was. It's kind of like me going to King Island once every year. Like these guys were going there once a year. It looks yep. very similar. Big yep. sandbar, you know, like barrels just going down the point. I can't think what that place is called. Yeah. But uh, that's the only other place I've seen that's anything like it. Yeah. No, that's fascinating. So in your yeah. in your career, is it um am I correct with the number? It's something like 180 cover shots that You've had somewhere around like that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, which is, I, which I, was, is I was at 140, and I thought that was a lot. But yeah. then I found a whole, a whole bunch more that was stashed away, and I'm like, oh, totally that's forget about a way. That's <laughs> insane. So being like, if you're, you're, you're shooting in that yeah. era of photographers shooting for cover shots, which, as you mentioned, doesn't probably really like exist anymore, but at, at that time it does. So are you, oh, yeah, yeah. do you have a certain like mindset when you're going out are you kind of like okay like the conditions are on today this could be a day where i could well, like you're constantly chasing that short that, how does that work i know that a lot of covers come from experimentation mm -hmm. like being being willing to switch up your your approach a bit like yep. maybe don't do it the same as everybody else is doing it's like good mm. example i'm on the beach of pipe and there's 40 different there's 40 big lenses on the beach yep I'm not going to be shooting anything like a thousand a second because I know there's already mm -hmm. at least twenty guys doing that. Yep. So I'm just I'm probably going to go for like a really slow shutter, like a twentieth or maybe even an eighth. Yep. And I'm going to get I'm going to get shots that are completely different to what all those other guys are getting. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm going to I'm going to be missing a few shots. Yep. You know, in the in the process, but I'm getting stuff ultimately that still gets looked at. Like mm. you know, back in those days, the magazine editors used to walk up and down the beach, trying uh, trying to you know get you to give them, trying to arrange for you know they'd come up and talk to everybody, trying to get them online for that year. Oh, you, so you got to submit to us? Oh yeah, we'll look back there on Thursday. Can you bring some slides with you? Yada yada yada. Wow. Yada. Okay. Yep. And so you know they were getting the same, exactly the same photos from twenty different guys. Yeah. With my shot, they took yep. them all. Mm. Because simply because they were different. No different. I mean, even if there was someone else, say, shooting at 20 per second, his photo yep. is going to be completely different to mine because mm. it's just how it is. It's the nature of it. No, yeah, that's just that's just talking about speed loops. I mean, there's different ways to go about it. Totally. Well, but, it's interesting. I saw a comment from um, the guys mm. at um, the Alma Surf Magazine, Brazilian Surf Magazine, that I think you've done a bit of work for. And yeah. um and they said, I think it was just a comment on one of your posts. They're like, "Thank you for teaching us new views, angles, and perspectives." And that was a comment to you. Yeah. So that I kind of read that as like that must have been your thing that you were constantly searching for that different view of the same yeah. thing that everyone else is I was, seeing. I mean, it's funny because back in the days when we were shooting a lot of film, mm. I was well aware that experimentation can often cost, yeah. cost <laughs> an image that could be worth some good money right mm. so i was at the same time back then i was at uh, i was a little bit hesitant to use the techniques too simply because i had to get the job done yeah but i've always preferred to use the techniques and these days because there's, there's not really any money in shooting so that's what i do i, mm. I shoot techniques to, to please myself yeah because ultimately i want to get i want to cr keep creating new and new different imagery and that's how you do it is by switching it up a bit. A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I think I said, I saw in one of your posts that you said my instinct is to be creative first and foremost. So that's kind of like you're going in now. I can see it in your like your more recent work, looking for light and creativity and finding those things, like utilizing the off season, I guess, like times like now mm -hmm. where maybe there aren't the the regular Hawaii waves to go and, you know, actually be creative and create artistic imagery. Yeah, well, some of the year it's like a huge aquarium everywhere. Mm. So, 
you know, turtles and fish and yeah. kelp and whatever yep. cruising around. So yeah, yeah, it's a whole different scene, did, really. Did that tie in as well? So when you were in that kind of back to when you're in the peak of your career, because you've got some incredible lineup shots of pipeline and like lots of places in the world, but the concept mm. of thinking like to either to not shoot from the water in order to create different shots where maybe you might shoot through something, etc. Did that like how did that come into your mind to play? Like if it's really firing, the idea to go, I won't swim out, I'll shoot from land, or was it just that it was such a long day that you try and combine both? Like how did that play into your mind? Oh um uh, I think it's just a matter of getting used to the routine. Mm -hmm. Like if you do it enough you you start to be like chase certain times of the day for certain mm -hmm. techniques and stuff. Like yep. yep. For example, you know, um, I like to shoot pipe first thing when there's lights first coming out, like around eight o'clock in the morning. I mm -hmm. like to shoot it from dead in front because when it, when I'm right in front of it, the the sunlight reflects on the on the wave and gets all glittery, mm -hmm. and that looks that looks really good with speed blurs. I mean, yes. that's that's one thing I've noticed about people who do try speed blurs they don't normally shoot them mm -hmm. they usually do it when when the light's crap and they've got nothing to earn nothing to, <laughs> do, to make anyway right yep yep but, but the time to be creative is when the light's really good too definitely anyway, so like mm. there's that and then and then like 1 p.m pipeline has a really good look mm -hmm. it gets this kind of really nice um light blue backlit light about it when it's yep. especially when it's big mm -hmm. so you know, at that time of the day, I, I like to um, go further down the beach, like way down the beach, and use a bit really big lens. Like mm -hmm. uh, I'm using uh, like an eight forty millimeter, mm -hmm. and um, when I'm looking up that up towards that way, the surface is usually silhouetted and it's all light blue, and yeah, it's just a different look. You know, it's yeah. I like I just like different. Different is my motto. Shoot yeah. Different. Yeah, yeah, no, that's amazing. That's amazing. And, and, then there's, and then there's also like a really good time to shoot pipe from the water is like some days when it's a little bit of cloud activity coming and going, you, you it'll get like around 2 p.m. You'll mm -hmm. get a big bank of clouds forming over over the west side of the down the coast. Mm -hmm. And the sun as the sun approaches that, the light gets really super glary and super photogenic from the water. Yeah, but only it's only good for like a half an hour or so before it's okay. losing yep. that look. But yeah, so there's, there's just different yeah. ways of looking at places. Perfect, yeah, and how the, it's like it's like sunset. Sunset looks really good like around two in the afternoon because yep. it gets this beautiful green backlight to it. Yeah, yeah. Most people don't shoot it at that time. Though. You don't really see shots of it. Yeah, like that, and yet it's so photogenic when it is. It's yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, crazy, right? yeah. Yep. No, that's cool. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, if you've got a good day, you've basically got a whole day there planned out. You could shoot all day and get a bunch of different, bunch of different mm -hmm. shots from, from all different angles. So yeah, that answers it. Um, that answers it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where else? I mean, you sort of like, you love Hawaii and that's like, you know, like being a place where else in the world are some of your, your spots that you like shooting? I mean, you come from Tasmania, so I imagine maybe like Shipsterns or, you know, some places down there or. Yeah, or oh, Tasmania all over. It's just so yeah. photogenic. It's beautiful. It's just country everywhere you go. It's yeah. beautiful. Yep. Actually, ship burns as, as, as great as, as it is to shoot and exciting and everything, mm -hmm. it's not really something that I would go that far out of my way to shoot these days simply because mm -hmm. it's more of a action thing. And yep. You know, it's kind of been done to death. Yep. You know, like, I mean, I'm sure there'll still be days that'll just be extraordinary, but... Mm. You know, back when they were first surfing it, it was that was pretty <laughs> cool back then, wasn't it? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's a bit like Chopu. It's just kind of you know we've gotten really used to it now, and mm -hmm. it, yep. it become harder to be impressed by it. Yep, yep. You know, I'm not saying as those days won't come, but mm. you know, it's um. But you know, I I totally applaud the you know, the guys down Tassie who are doing that shit. It's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yep. And I remember when they were first there, all the local guys, they called themselves the Southern Lords. Um, when those were those guys were like charging it, it was kind of like it was totally Wild West days for those guys because none of them, pretty much none of them were sponsored. 
Yeah. And so yeah. these guys are like, well, this is our chance. This is our chance to put Tassie on the map and actually be sponsored surfers and blah, blah, blah. And hell yep. yeah, let's do this shit, right? So, yep. you know, good good for them, man. Like they got they got to sample that because yep. Tassie's always been considered a bit of a backwater, maybe not so much anymore. Mm. But, yeah, the, the truth is Glace has got hundreds of amazing certain you know, waves i mean it's just there's so many waves yeah all the way around that place it's it's incredible yeah for sure so did you shoot comps during your career or were you mainly shooting like free surfing for for magazines um well shooting comps was my way of shooting pros in the early days because mm-hmm. you never saw them really yep unless yep. you lived at a beach where one lived mm. So, yeah, I used to go to the contest whenever I could. You know, they'd have one at Manly or Narrabeen or yep. Surf Fest up in Yui or Yeah. Surf Fest was my favourite, actually. Yeah, I was, yeah, surf it was great. Surf Fest was always a good occasion, I thought. I yeah. always, went, I always went to Surf Fest. I, I liked it. It was a good contest. Back in the day um, when it was at Newcastle Beach, probably. It was. What's it held now? Yeah, it's at Merriweather now. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, well, whatever. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a different it's world. I, I remember as a kid going to, um, yeah, to Surf Fest at Newcastle Beach, and when there was just like so many people, like the the atmosphere was amazing. I remember like really early days watching like Kelly Slater there when he was really young, and just like when I was a kid. Kelly was just, he was bainy. Yeah, and Did it was just this heat? crazy atmosphere, but it's just it doesn't it have the heat? same vibe anymore. Yeah, yeah. It was the heat where the young Slater was mm. was um, surfing against Bainey. Slater had just taken out the Pro Junior. Mm. And fucking Bainey busts an air. <laughs> and going, I think he pulled it. Yep. And I was like, oh my God, that's insane. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, it was, it was yep. pretty cool. Yeah. yeah I, like, I like Bainey. He'd be a good um, he'd be a good bloke to to interview, I reckon. Yeah. But he's not a photographer, so probably not yep. for you. But, <laughs> but that, that's actually fascinating <laughs> that you just mentioned that about the air. Like how being a photographer through such a long evolution of surfing like how did that yeah. how, how did the changing of surfing um was there sort of some exciting times like you were used to shooting guys like you said the the mark richards guys and their style and then there must have been an era where aerial surfing and different stuff started to come in did that kind of you know was that a fascinating sort of well, thing to well, live in through? the early days when the early days when slater was busting them mm. straight after the pro junior Mm. Yeah, that was pretty interesting to see because it mm. wasn't really something that you saw a lot of. Mm. You know, usually when you saw airs, they never made them. Yep. You know, most people didn't make them. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you'd get a crazy shot, you know. Um, I think they were using jet skis there for a while to do air shots, weren't they? Yeah, yeah to get in the speed, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they were able to get pull all these crazy air shots. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I remember shooting Slater at Avalon it busting quite a few of them. It was pretty interesting thinking, I'll see if some of this shit's going to get published for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yep. later and he's born them. Yep. <laughs> you know? But uh, airs have kind of gotten to the point. I mean, like, look, I shot a lot of them over the last 20 years here in Hawaii. Yep. Uh, but it's gotten to the point where no one really gives a shit. <laughs> I know. I feel like it's to a degree, it's sort of almost like going like backwards a little bit, which is yeah, why I touched on like guys like Ethan Ewing before. I feel like there's kind of a renewed appreciation for like stylish. I oh, definitely like his approach to carving. It's really nice to watch. Yeah. And yeah. also, also I've noticed a manoeuvre that's been coming back a little bit, which I kind of appreciate because I kind of got bored with it back in the day, but floaters. Yeah. Yep. Floaters were so good on big waves, like yeah, when they're going really fast. Oh yep. my god! Yeah, <laughs> bring those back. That's that's just good, man. Yeah. But, um, I remember seeing uh, carving evolve a lot when I was in Hawaii early days. Mm. Guys were like, instead of just doing the full carve, they were bringing it right around so the nose was touching the wall, and then they were coming back out. Yep. And like they weren't really doing that. At all until like, mm. you know, two thousand or so. Yeah, I think Lowy did. I think Mick Lowe did one, mm-hmm. and it ended up in all kinds of magazines simply yeah. because it was a full carb to the point of where you couldn't go and take it any further. Yeah, stuff like that. You know, I don't know. carbs are good, man. 
Yeah, definitely. And, and then you got backhand carving like Tommy Carroll at uh, Winky Pop all those years ago. Do you ever see any of that? It's amazing. Yeah, Tommy probably Carroll seen some. Probably seen some old footage. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as then as a magazine photographer and you're looking for covers and stuff, is that something that then like came into your mind over the time? Are you then kind of going, well, this is something that maybe is evolving. Well, if I can if I can get some shots of this, this might be the next kind of cover. Or did you think yeah. that way? Or? I wasn't well, I wasn't really thinking about getting covers. I was just thinking about taking good photos and hoping okay. something, something got used, you know. Yep. Um, um yeah, you know. Considering I had a hundred and eighty of them, mm. I never really, I never really got that many covers. Really, compared to some guys, like some guys dominated. Yep. Like Gram, like Grambo was surfing like Bosco yep. with waves. Yep. Um, Billman with uh, Transworld. Mm -hmm. So those guys were like in staff positions, so they were going to get the cover. Yep. Pretty much no matter what, unless their photos were just totally shit. Yep, yep. <laughs> you know? Yep. So, yeah, I was never a staff photographer, actually. I was still, I was always independent. I was okay. independent. I mm -hmm. just felt that was important, especially when I first moved here. Because mm. when I first moved here, I was already well under my way in Australia, selling to all advertisers and stuff correctly, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And then I moved here, and tur it turned out... That wasn't how they did it here. You had to hand all the photos over to the magazines and let them do the sales. Oh. And I'm thinking, eh, I don't know about that. I'm going to be at the bottom of that totem pole. Yep. So that's not really something I really feel like I want to do. Yep. Um, so I just started dealing with the companies direct myself, and I was mm -hmm. killing it because the companies had never had that. Mm-hmm. They'd, they'd always been get, the magazines always held back the best shots to the companies, gave them the bees for ads, and then sometime later an, an A would appear somewhere, right? Yeah. But they hardly ever got the A shots for ads, mm. and, and because I was selling directly to them, yep. I was giving an A shots, and I was I was doing really good there at one stage. Okay. Yeah. For a couple of years, yeah, like. Yep. Seventy nine through uh, sorry seventy nine sorry. Um, 97 through to 2000 particularly, I think those were mm -hmm. pretty much golden years. Yep, yep. Yeah. So I've always I've been fascinated and it's interesting to talk to, to someone like yourself specifically. So you've mentioned that the shift in the dig, like to digital cameras from film, like obviously mm -hmm. the one side of that that you hear is that then maybe everyone, you know, who could afford it can have a camera. There's maybe more people shooting. But I guess at the same time, mm -hmm. the guys who are at the, the top photographers like yourself then have a camera that has more than, you know, like we mentioned, 36 frames to essentially experiment with. So how did how did that impact your career? Like, obviously, maybe it made it more competitive, but it did, did it give you a chance as well to become more experimental or to get more shots maybe than you could before? Oh, yeah, all that. Mm -hmm. um, I still remember when I went digital, it was late 2004, and I actually went to a Canon 1D Mark II, which mm -hmm. was only eight megapixels. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I think about it, I kind of took the quality of my photography down a couple yeah. of notches for a couple of years there because mm. film, film was yeah. about a, a, a slide, a Velvia slide is probably about 30 megapixels. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> the quality of my work actually dropped a bit. But mm -hmm. the reason I went digital when I did was I didn't want to be, be that guy playing catch up. Mm hmm. I wanted, yep. I wanted to be I wanted to be that guy that okay look, Davey's gone digital. We know he can do this. Let's just get him to do it, right? Mm. I wanted I wanted to be that guy who was ready to do it. You know, yeah. Funny thing was the magazines didn't want to know about digital. They got dragged kicking and screaming into the digital age. Wow. Okay. I actually had a guy at Surfer Magazine tell me, Davey, you're blowing it. We're not going to use this digital stuff. Wow. We're not going to be using your stuff. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, I've just spent 10 grand changing over. You can't yeah. <laughs> do computer and monitor and all that shit, the slide scanner. And... Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it definitely changed things. It's made it a lot, it's made it a lot easier to shoot, not mm. to not miss the moment. 
Yeah. Because you you always got usually anyway you've got so many frames you can ship for the camera will stop. Mm -hmm. But digital these days it's pretty good. It's pretty yep. forgiving. Whereas like in the old days when we were shooting film, I always had that in the back of my mind. Oh look, I'm up to about twenty six now on the roll. If a big sequence comes, I'm going to be screwed. I'm only going to get ten shots. So next, yep. after the next wave, I'm pulling that film out and putting a new one in. Even yep. if I haven't, even if I haven't finished it, yeah. You know? Yeah. And yep. back in those days, if you had a really good day shooting at like off the wall of pipe, you might have ten rolls of film in your bag. Mm. That's only three hundred and sixty photos. Yeah. And just about everybody shoots at least that on a digital camera these days. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So you know. Uh, what I think is old classic moments on film are going to become pretty valuable because mm. there's just simply not as many people out there with them. Yep. And two, surf photographers are notorious for not being organised. <laughs> so a, a yep. lot of us, the photos have just become destroyed or lost. Yep. Or, yeah. You know, thrown yep. away or whatever. Yeah. But I've now been pretty organised. I started digitising my collection of images. Yeah. In the late nineties. Yeah, yeah. I could, I could see where things were going to go. Mm -hmm. So but what I, do you I think? Because I, I want to, I want to talk to you about that where you've progressed these days. Mm -hmm. But just a, an idea just came into my mind then. So what do you think then? Being someone who has been like a action surf photographer and now you have like an artistic eye, like with this with this digital age, what do you think is the thing now mm -hmm. that people would need to stand out. And I guess it's more thinking along ideas of like, if everyone can shoot a photo, then maybe the effort to get a photo, the composition, all stuff like that. Is there? Well, I'm shooting, I'm shooting mainly the hang up on people's walls. So yep. one thing I always ask myself is would someone hang that on their wall? Mm -hmm. You know, is that something, is that what I'm about to photograph? Is that, does that look like it's going to turn into something that might hang on someone's wall? Yep. Okay. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. Cool. So and what really, do you think? I'm just shooting from an artistic point of view mostly these days. Cool. And what goes through your mind? What are those? What are some of those things maybe that you're thinking when you're thinking about something going on a wall? What sort of elements? Stuff appeals to such a wide range of people. So what I try to think of is the average person in the street who might not even be a surfer. Yep. Yeah, I'm trying to aim for that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to aim for the just Mr. Mrs. Normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, Normal that's yeah. really not, not too obsessed with surf. I mean, but yeah, you know, surf is so universal. You don't have to be a surf to appreciate it. Yeah. You know? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, I'm just really look, aiming for, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Average. Mm -hmm. um, although during a time of recession, one has to aim for Mr. and Mrs. Wealthy as well. <laughs> yeah, true. Be anyone, true. Be anyone have, who might have money to spend. Have money to put stuff on the wall, yeah. So how yeah. did that How did that evolution happen for you? I mean, obviously you said you sort of saw the writing on the wall. So was there a point where, I guess, gradually shooting, surfing to sell images started to progress towards shooting images for print? Because you print your own work as well, don't you? Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. So is, was that just kind of more of a, you could kind of see that this is an, this is the direction you can then create some more longevity with if you start doing that, the art well, stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, like you, any job, it comes to a point where you're evolving into something else eventually. And mm. that's, that's what I did. I evolved basically. I went from shooting for magazines, which were like dying, you know, just dropping like flies. They were magazines were. Mm. It's amazing, actually, Australia's managed to hold on to its three main surf mags, but only just. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, just, uh, I, yeah, I could see that, well, I'm going to, I've got still have bills to pay. I can't keep mm. just shooting surf. That's not going to do it. It's not yep. going to cut it. You know? So, mm -hmm. you know, I started selling my, my, um, because I got a huge archive of imagery. Yeah. Uh, so I just started selling the images of that. Uh, a lot of people did actually. Mm. A lot of people, a lot of people ran with that too. Yeah. But at least I, I had a couple of years on most of them because I saw most surf photographers was, was still flogging that horse for two or three years after I yep. made the conscious move to move away from that. Yeah. But eventually, yep. eventually they all followed because, well, when I say followed, they all left left the surf industry too because. 
yeah. ultimately we need to make a living, right? And, yeah. Um, surf industry is not really a good place to look for a living. Not <laughs> for a surfer these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's getting tougher for sure. Yeah. So what does your so what does your like living look like now? Is it selling prints? I've noticed maybe you, do you do like any kind of like weddings or lifestyle shoots or anything, or is that just a bit random? Or yeah, I do, yeah, it's random. I do random stuff like that. Mm -hmm. if, uh, you know, people ask me, but generally yep. I make my living off my art, off yep. my art prints, canvas. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. And are you intentionally continually shooting like? now for new images obviously you've got a big archive oh, image but are you kind of going out no, thinking hopefully time. yeah i'll shoot my yeah, next print shot I've, I've, tomorrow yeah like i might see it's going to be low tide somewhere and the sandbar is like looking really primed and okay so i've got my eye on that little zone you know and so mm -hmm. there's different places that i keep an eye on when i see the potential to to get whatever it is i want to photograph I, i'll uh I'll go and shoot that place. Yeah, you know, most yep. of the time it's really wind that I'm working around uh -huh. more than anything. Yep. For, for a lot of what I shoot, um, we I mean we've just about always got some kind of wave here. Although yep. having said that, it has been quite the last couple of weeks in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like really <laughs> flat on the North Shore. Like I don't think I've ever seen it. Okay. Um, but um, anyway, uh, yeah, I still yeah I'm always looking to shoot stuff i've always got my eye on certain spots yeah you know yeah. i'll see like there's a place over on the east side i want to shoot sometime but i'm waiting for the the wind to completely piss off and mm -hmm. like we've had such relentless trade winds the last couple of years here mm -hmm. so i've been i've been waiting a long time to go and shoot that place because i'm you know the conditions haven't been coming along that i'm wanting to shoot at that place yeah. but yeah, yeah i've got little spots like that all over that i, that I shoot yeah. So what about in the winters now? What do you do? Will you still like shoot surfing or are you just looking for maybe some different opportunities now? Generally, I'm not shooting surfing with any intent to make money. Yeah. So when I when I am shooting surfing, it's it's really just because I want to be there and shoot or or I'm hmm. shooting artistically. Yep. You know, with an artistic eye. Uh, but generally, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not shooting surfing at all to try and make a living off it. Yep. No. Yep. I think I saw you say somewhere that you used to try and maybe swim out during the comps to have an opportunity to shoot empty pipeline for the yeah, that, that's how all the photographers did it back in the day. Yeah. 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 We'd all go yeah. swim out during the contest because there'd only be a couple of guys out there. And yeah. You'd get a lot of empty barrels breaking with nobody on them. Yeah. That, yep. was, a, that was a big deal with the, with the photographers. There you go. Especially in the afternoons. Yep. Yep. Not doing the afternoons, but I imagine you're yeah, probably I mean, not allowed to do that any, anymore. You can ask any for any well-known surf photographer from back in the day that used to shoot pipe, and mm. they'll they'll say, "Yeah, we used to do that." Yep. Yeah. Mm. Yep. It's similar to like when, yeah, say when surfest's on or something like that here, and I'll just go and shoot in the mornings when, like, so it's sunrise, so it's better light, and everyone's warming up and practicing, so they don't have jerseys mm. on. And it's surface shooting, like, you know, shooting in better light as well. So, yeah, it's interesting using the, the stuff around the comp to uh, to get those shots. I like that place in Dixon Park too, how it's it's heavily shadowed. Mm. Uh, that you can get such great lighting and that was stuff like that, you know, with the yeah, mountain behind you. If black. you can get out on enough angle, like, like on that. the slightly lower tide to get that mm. mountain in the background, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Because it's tough oh, in Newcastle. It's so built up on the shoreline here. That's why I like places like Tassie and New Zealand, like, going places like that to shoot because the coastline's so rugged so you can get the mm. ocean and a really natural coastline whereas everything along the coastline here is built up with like bars and restaurants so it's kind of hard to to mm. find that but there is that one angle that yeah on the right day you can still get yeah well, rambo looks like he lives in the best place there in yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's got this one little sandbar or something that he shoots a lot i wouldn't call yeah. it little i mean but, yeah i mean there's this one place that he seems to shoot empty waves out a lot, and it's just so photogenic looking. Yeah, he's but definitely. Yeah, we've yeah. all got our little spots like that that we like to shoot, you know. Yeah, he's definitely got his spots for sure. Yeah. So, do you still do you get a chance to travel much these days? I guess obviously post all the COVID craziness, do you still travel? Not really? Much? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I actually haven't been on any plane since 2018. Oh wow! Okay. 
<laughs> but you know, like I live in the I live in the kind of place where people want to go to. Exactly, you live in the holiday spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's pretty. No, it's a pretty good place to see pictures. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You don't have to put a wetsuit on or anything, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do you find um, that with your with your print sales because that's what you do, and I think people be interested in it. Like, you kind of sell them all around the world. Is it one of those things where there's a lot of people yeah. in the world that are probably fascinated with? Hawaii specifically or the ocean in general, you know what I mean? That kind of gives it that appeal. Um, I don't know. That, I don't know that Hawaii is the attraction for most okay. of my customers. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just the ocean. Them, yeah. I think most of them see my stuff on social media. Yep. Yep. Although that's kind of got a lot harder with the algorithms and stuff. Yeah. How's that evolution mean for you? I know like you do, um, oh. You do seem to post like pretty regularly, which is good. There's a, there's some guys that I've spoken to that are, um, you know, of sort of your generation that kind of maybe haven't really have decided yeah. to, you know, I guess like you said with the the guy I was talking about when the digital cameras first came out, it's easy to kind of say, oh no, I don't want to embrace this. It's new, but you seem to be fairly active on there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, I think. Do you find it? Do you find it helps with your? Like, is it where you kind of go to for your marketing? Yeah. Well, mm. in the early days of Instagram, I was actually preferring to post on Instagram than sending them to the magazines. Mm. Actually, well, I actually felt like, uh, I think I've got more of a voice doing this, and even now I'm not getting paid to to post these images. Mm-hmm. I've still got enough people following me that I can make a sale here and there. Yep. So it's just, yeah, I'd, definitely in the early days of Instagram, I had a preference for, sh- you know, posting rather than sending to mags. Mm-hmm. I, don't know, I just got to the point where I mean, magazine was just too hard. It yep. just became too hard. Mm-hmm. Too many people wanted to get published, not enough magazines, not enough pages. 100%. Not enough yep. money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess yeah. that's one thing with the social media. It's almost like your own kind of magazine that you're publishing you can you can control mm-hmm. what you put on there you can control your messaging that kind of stuff so yeah 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 actually the best social network there ever was was myspace geez that was good oh yeah <laughs> oh myspace was so good dude you could yeah. you could change the background on your page to anything yep so there wasn't there wasn't any uniformity like there is with facebook and mm. yep you know Every page was a totally unique masterpiece. And you yeah. had to you had to have some basic knowledge on coding, but it wasn't that hard. Yep. You know? Yep. But yeah, it, it was great. My space was so cool. Every now and then I'll see somebody post a picture of Tom. They, they used to used to be this guy that was like the, the one who ran it. And yep. it was a picture of looking back at the camera over his shoulder. And every now and then someone will post a picture of like Where's this guy? We had him back, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. My space was really cool. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Well, yeah. this has been amazing. I guess just to sort of wrap it up, because you you know, you've done so much photography over your career, and obviously your intentions have changed more recently with your sort of art and everything. So for anyone watching, there's a lot of people that watch this that are just getting into photography, just you know, getting a camera, seen a lot of stuff on Instagram mm-hmm. and stuff. So what sort of general advice would you would you give to someone that's just you know maybe got an interest in ocean photography and is just sort of starting out um one is follow the light because mm. there's so many there's so many um great pictures that you can shoot just because of totally extraordinary light that you'll know you that you'll not get any other any other way yep um so Chase the light, especially the contrasts. And the other thing is you've really got to do it with a passion. If you're going to make a career of it or, you know, you just think you, you want to make a living from doing this because it's what you love to do, well, you've really got to have a passion to do it because that's what will get you over the humps. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's so I amazing. Plenty of times when I was young and... <laughs> There wasn't any really any money in the bank. I'm like, oh, okay, so I'm not going to pay the rent this this month. Oh, here's a check. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Off we go. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, even oneself, I guess. You know. 
Mm, for sure. Something, something like that. But um, you got to really have a passion for anything like this that's um, creative. Mm. It helps. Yeah. It, it really helps. Like, um, it'll just get you over, over those dry times when um, you're wondering, why, why am I doing this? Yeah, definitely. If you're, really, <laughs> if you're really passionate about it, that's why you're doing it, right? But yeah for sure uh, yep no 100 percent. yeah when you're uh when you're not working for someone else you definitely need that extra thing to push you through when um yeah like you said you have a few of those dry spells for sure mm. been through a bunch of those uh, yeah that's amazing oh, I, remember one dry, I remember one dry spell where we didn't have 16 i think living in north bondi and we didn't have swell in six months mm. six months no waves i mean yep. it was Ridiculous. Yeah. My brother just moved up from Hobart. He was pissed. <laughs> Look, he was looking forward to yeah, you know, surfing some nice warm water waves. Yeah. <laughs> Compared yep. to Tasmania, right? <laughs> so he's yep. like, what the hell, man? It's one of those things, yeah. isn't it? When you're relying on nature as your as your subject, then uh yeah, there's always that possibility. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. But oh, you, well- but yeah, you know, just keep keep an open mind and mm-hmm. what you're shedding. You know, it doesn't always have to be the same thing. You know, mm. I, that's the only thing I, was, I find too is a lot. Often, a lot of the best photos will come along uh, just because you were there, just yeah. because you were there, ready to take the shot, not even knowing that that particular shot was coming. Yeah, you know, like I might be Love it. shooting a shore break. Mm. And uh, I look the other way, and there's a rainbow hanging right out of the way. I'm like, well, I'm going to shoot that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't have got it if I hadn't been there. So, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay. Yeah, I hope people really like listen to that because, um, yeah, I'm a massive believer in that. Um, yeah, with what I do, I just try to go out and shoot or at least go out yeah. most days anyway because you just don't know what's going to happen. Like, it's often some of those gloomy days where things like rainbows end up appearing. So it's, um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> good, good example. I was, uh, I was gonna shoot this guy stand up paddling one morning from the from the water level, mm-hmm. and it was uh, a many near sunrise, and there was like super gloomy clouds. I'm like, oh, do you think we should do it? Oh, well, we're here, whatever. So we got in the water, and yep, and we're getting these killer silhouettes against these really chunky storm clouds. I mean, it was mm. cool. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you just got to go. If you got to go. There, you can't predict it. Yeah, yep. if you're there, if you're mm-hmm. there ready to do it, it looks like shit. Do it anyway, because you, you never know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's you're amazing. There, what, what, what the hell, you know? That's amazing. I love it. Yeah. No, I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, I think there's yeah. some awesome words to end on. I really hope that everyone, yeah takes that on board especially um people or photographers that are listening um which i know there's a few because that's yeah it's really good right. to get that advice from from someone like yourself so right. yeah awesome well yeah thank you so much for your time it's been yeah it's a real pleasure to talk to you and, and find out a bit more about your story and um yeah i appreciate your time to to come on all right awesome cool nice speaking yeah. to you all right <laughs> cheerio